Hey everybody, I'm back and live with another video review for Arrow Video. I get a lot of those. Uh, this is this one's basket case. Hello, mother. And uh, as usual, I'll try not to show too much of how sexy it is right off the bat, but like you know, you got that going on as you can see. Sexy. Um, we're going to do the same review that we always do. We're going to uh, go through past releases. Am I off center? Probably. In my head. <laughs> um, we're going to go through past releases. Um, compare the two. We're going to go through the guts of the new release. Um, the special features. The transfer. The uh, artwork. The whole total package. And then at the end... We will determine whether we would, one, upgrade from previous release, or two, or two, uh, just buy it outright. So let's get started, shall we? Because this one's fucking loaded, and I've got a lot of reading to do. And if there's anything Larry hates more than fucking vegetables, it's doing a lot of reading, like tedious reading. Not, you know, enjoyable reading. So, without further ado, Mom... Let's get going. There's a lot of crazy names on this. I'm just disclaimer right off the bat. I I go through like the, I go through the credits and like the fucking you know the people involved in these films and I'm like, aren't there any people with simple names? Why aren't there any filmmakers named Smith? It's always crazy shit. Fucking like Eastern European names and whatnot. Um, I don't know why. But it seems to be a trend, I'm noticing, as someone who hates to try to pronounce names live on camera. I'm terrible with names. Um, shall we get going? Hello, Shane. So, uh, previously, this was, a Basket Case was released on Blu-ray in the past, 2011 even, uh, by uh, Image Entertainment and Something Weird. Good label with obscure movies. Um, Image, eh, you know... Not not known for, like, high-end uh, releases. But, uh, you know, they put some cool stuff out there. Um, so, uh, special features on that. It was a uh, full-frame HD transfer preserved uh, from the original 16mm. Basket case was shot in 16mm. It's got a commentary from Frank Hen Henenlotter and um, Edgar Ivins. And uh, actress Beverly Boner. It's probably Bonner, but we're going to go with Boner for today because it's fun. Check that off. Beverly Boner. Um, it's got uh, rare outtakes and behind-the-scene footage from the director's personal collection. Very cool. Uh, this, there's nothing wrong with this, this previous release. It's got uh, a sizable amount of special features. I don't know about the transfer, but... Um, Special features, yes. Two theatrical trailers and plus a TV spot. Uh, 2001 sh uh, video short. In search of hotel... Oh my god, I can't read that. What is it? I have a bad scan. And I can't make out this fucking thing. Where is it? Broslin, Hotel Broslin, in search of Hotel Broslin. I couldn't tell. They put an exclamation point on the end of it, and it threw me off because I thought it was like an L or something. Um, that's a video short, 2001, and uh, two rare basket case radio spots. The radio spots are cool. I own them. And a uh, gallery of basket case exploitation art and behind-the-scenes photos. So right away, the 2011 Blu-ray release, as you can see, I'm reading that, because um, I'm too lazy to write. You know, it's a picture that I threw on a Word document and printed out. So uh, not bad, not bad. The only problem with that is uh, Arrow said, like, we're going to take all of those, except for one that I think I didn't read. Oh, yeah, I didn't read it. Uh, brand new video introduction by Hedenlotter, Frank Hedenlotter, the uh, director, writer, director, I think. Um, Arrow doesn't have that. It doesn't have that on there. So, uh, you know, 
But all the rest of those are on there. Introduction, do we really, you know, do you care? So uh, this, this transfer, we're going straight into the, let's do the physical first, shall we? We're going out of order. <laughs> Larry, <laughs> yeah. Poor coffee. So we're going to do the sexy first. Um, look at this fucking slipcase. It's uh, a little metallic, reflective. Uh, even the basket parts are a little, a little metallic, a little metallic ink in there. Uh, back, just the special features. But uh, there's your slipcase. That'll be worth like $100 like in a couple months. Um, then we got the, uh, the alternate art. Isn't that great when they do that? Uh, this one has three different artworks. So we got the slipcase, you got that, and then uh, you got the reversible original artwork on the, uh, on the flip side, if you will. Hey, Noah. Um, so you got that. And then uh, newly commissioned artwork by Sandra Deck. And uh, I like this. I like this. I, don't, I usually don't like... Commissioned artwork on these new releases, but uh, this one's not bad. It's pretty cool, actually. But, that being said, this is such an iconic image that, um, I mean, she was up against it trying to fucking, trying to top that. I mean, like, there's just no fucking way, right? So, uh, there's that. Then we got a, what did I write, 27-page booklet, which is fucking cool. Um, it's got the history of the film by somebody, Mike Gingold, I think. That's their go-to fucking histor horror historian. Um, cool artwork. I believe this is probably by Sarah Deck, too. Um, and then, but like cooler than all that, there's a little mini comic in here. I'm not sure where this came from. Um, it's called uh, Champagne in the Park. You can't read it. It's backwards, but Champagne, P-A-I-N. Um, so you got like a little mini comic in the in the 27 page booklet. It's you know a couple. It's you know five six pages something like that. I didn't count it, but uh, pretty cool. I like that better than, like, another fucking essay from a historian, if you know what I'm saying. If you know what I'm saying. Um, also, more art. I'm pretty sure this is, yeah, that's definitely new art from uh, Sarah Deck. So, uh, she did, like, she did the sexy slipcase. And uh, this. And that, I believe. Um, and, you know, it's nice. Really nice. She did a good job, I gotta say. Oh, and, and let's not forget that. She did that too, which is really cool. I like that a lot. It's unusual. It's unusual for me to say that. Now, that's the physical. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, shall we? Man, it's fucking cold out. Reason. Meat and potatoes. So this is a brand new 4K restoration from the original 16 millimeter negative that uh, was provided by the Museum of Modern Art, if you will. <laughs> Basket case. The Museum of Modern Art had a 16 millimeter negative of basket case. I tried to wrap my head around that, but I can't. I don't, I'm not sure what that's about. Um, so it's a, it's a high-def Blu-ray. Do I need to say duh? Uh, presentation, 1080p, high-def. Yeah, I'm assuming you're talking about Museum of Modern Art. Um, they had a, like, when they got, did the restoration, they did a screening of it in, like, 2000-something. Um, it's a special, they did a special feature out of the screening and did like the, they put the Q&A on here, which I cannot find right away. But um, Museum of, I mean, maybe like, I'm not, I don't know what the Museum of Modern Art is, like really. But uh, I assumed like, you know, Van Gogh's and fucking, you know, shit like that. Not fucking Frank Hedenlotter and Basket Case. But um, whatever, 
It's cool. Um, so they hooked they hooked Arrow up with a fucking 16 millimeter negative of it. Um, it's got the original uncompressed PCM mono audio, which was taken from the original 35 millimeter uh, 35 millimeter magnetic tracks, which is cool. Uh, English subtitles for um, the deaf and hard of hearing or hearing impaired. Did they change that? It used to be hearing impaired. Now this says hard of hearing. Hard of hearing seems more harsh, doesn't it? Like you gotta like you gotta put a spin on it so it sounds as kind as possible. Hard of hearing, hearing impaired, differently hearid, hearid. I think is probably what you want. Differently hearid. Um. So there's a brand new. On top of the previous audio commentary from the something weird release, um, there's a brand new audio commentary with Hedenlotter, Frank Hedenlotter, and Kevin Hentenrick. He plays, uh, what is it? He plays the main character. Lyle? No, it's uh, Daryl. Just, uh, you know, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Whatever. He plays the main character. Um, it's on here somewhere. I'll get to it and I'll let you know. Not that it's important. So, uh, archival audio commentary from the Something Weird. Head and Lauder producer Edgar Ivins and uh, Beverly Boner and filmmaker Scooter McRae. What a great name for a filmmaker. Scooter McRae. Let's, let's circle that. Uh, another the picture must be grainy as hell. We'll get to that. Um, I would tell you, but like you know, I'll, I'll I gotta go in order. Otherwise, I'm fucking I'm gone. I'm gone. Um, I should have like a little fucking outline sheet here and be like, hey, Larry, stupid, follow this A B C D. You know all that. Um. So, uh, Basket Case, there's a special feature called Basket Case Three and a Half. It's an interview with uh, Dwayne Bradley. Dwayne, that's the main character that uh, Kevin uh, Hen Hentenrick, <laughs> Kevin Hentenrick uh, plays, Dwayne Bradley, and his brother Bile, Bile, Bile. But I Belial, Belial, there it is. I worked through it. So it's a it's a mock interview with Dwayne Bradley, the actual the the original actor. Um, I have to say his name, Henton Rick again. Um, where uh, Frank Hedenlotter, it's like kind of a it's kind of like a found footage type uh, uh, short film where Hedenlotter visits uh, Dwayne Bradley decades after like current day. Decades after the event, um, it's a short film. It's eight minutes and 30 seconds long. Um, I watched it, you know. <laughs> um, me and the Bradley Boys, a brand new interview with uh, actor uh, Kevin Van Hentenrick, which is 16 minutes and 24 seconds long. Uh, pretty beefy fucking special features on this. Took me a long time to fucking do the sheet. And a long time to go through them, watching them. Um, we got a brief interview. This is archival for sure. A brief interview with director Frank Hedenlotter. Um, it's a strange 2017 interview. You know, it might be new actually. But it's like it's like some random dude like that's sitting in a chair fucking naked um, that's not Hedenlotter talking as if he was Hedenlotter um, for three, three minutes and 50 seconds. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> scene double, the basket case twins. Uh, brand new interview from Florence and Mary Ellen Schultz. Uh, the twins from the original movie Basket Case. Um, they're gingers and very freckled. Uh, eight minutes and 55 seconds. Uh, the Latvian connection. Here goes the fucking names, everyone. A brand new Making a featurette containing interviews with producer Edgar Ivins, uh, casting person and actress Ursula Belotis, uh, associate producer and effects artist Yugis Nigels, and uh, Bial 
uh, performer Kika Nigels. So, uh, hey, it's Anthony, Mr. Fucking Candy Corn Apocalypse himself. Thank you for joining and taking time away from your sourdough to uh, take a look at this review that I'm doing live. Um, so that's the Latvian Connection is 27 and 30, 27 minutes, 33 second, seconds, everyone. Uh, next special feature, Blood Basket and Beyond, a brand new interview with actress Beverly Boner. Um, six minutes and four seconds. Uh, that, she is, plays the African-American neighbor to uh, Dwayne in the movie. Uh, Mr. Anthony says, I'm never far away from sourdough. Um, you must love sourdough. I, how do I get some? Can I trade you for a loaf of sourdough? I, you, you, you bake such fucking wonderful things. Um, how do I get some of that? Like, it's just not fucking fair to post those pictures and expect me not to fucking want to eat some of it. Like I said before, if I was your, if I lived up there, I'd be stopping by every day. Hey, hey, Tony, what's going on? You baking anything? And like, that would be it. I would be like, that would be your day every day. I can't, I'm, I'm a fiend. I'm a fiend. Next special feature, Tony. Beisle goes to the drive-in. A brand new interview with film critic Joe Bob Briggs. Uh, six minutes and 55 seconds. I watched it. Um, you know, like his show wasn't so great, but uh, the man knows his fucking film history. Or at least he prepares well for interviews. You know, there's a difference. Like, I could pretend that, like, I'm super knowledgeable if I had time to prepare. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, for example, I, I know all the special features on this basket case release. That's how smart I am. Yeah, it's a good, it's actually a good interview with Joe Bob. He talks about how he saw it in Cannes, the Cannes Film Festival. And uh, I was like, get the fuck out of here. Basket Case played at the Cannes Film Festival. That's fucking ridiculous. And he said, though, that outside of the main film festival, they have, um, like, side streets off of, like, in that whole town, apparently. They play other fucking, other, um, movies that like aren't involved in the film festival but like films that are like lower budget that are looking for distribution deals and sometimes people go to them and they fucking get hooked up it's outside of the festival um it makes me want to go to Cannes and check out that shit like fuck the festival i, I bet the interesting stuff's going on fucking in the side streets so yeah it's a good interview with joe bob briggs um everyone's welcome I lost connection, apparently, for a second. Yeah, I'm going to drive up to fucking Pennsylvania and get bread. You're a son of a bitch with all that fucking baking. You have hot loaves. Where were we? I lost connection for a second. It just said paused, trying to reconnect. And uh, I'm back now, I guess. Probably all pixelated and shit. Um, shall we continue with the list of special features? It's extensive. It's an extensive fucking list. Arrow doesn't fuck around, in case you didn't know. Um, they're like, you know, whatever anybody else had, we're going to fucking quadruple that and fucking make it sexier. So uh, next special feature Outtakes featurette. There's nothing wrong. This phone's not even two years old. I don't know what the deal is. I had to factory reset it. And uh, and it's working fine now. That was a connection issue. Maybe it... There's a solar storm. Let's blame it on that. Uh, outtakes featurette. Six minutes and 13 seconds. What's in the basket? Now, this is crazy. Um... Feature-length documentary covering the three films in the Basket Case series. An hour and 18 minutes and 41 seconds long, people. Um, that's sexy. Feature-length. Very cool. Um, so it's like, you know, two movies plus. Lots of fucking... With all this added up, it's probably like three or four fucking movies worth of entertainment. 
Um, in search of Hotel Broslin. Uh, archival location feature at. It's where Head and Lauder and like some New York rapper <laughs> go around and fucking and look for their film locations. It's 16 minutes and eight and eight seconds long. Um, the Frisian of Fission. Basket Case. Conjoined Twins and Freaks in Cinema. A brand new video essay by Travis Crawford. 23 minutes and, and three seconds long. I'm not saying it's boring. I'm not saying it's exciting. And we move on. Slash of the Knife, 1972. A rarely seen short film by Frank Hedenlotter. Featuring many of the same ass actors, not asses, actors from, the, from Basket Case. And it includes optional audio commentary by Hedenlotter and playwright Mike Vensenega. I will say. Three, three, uh, and it's 30 minutes and 13 seconds long. I really need some bread. I'm, I'm carb deprived. I need like, just like, can you just stuff a loaf of sourdough right in here? I'll get a, I'll get a good vein for you. I need it badly. Uh, where were we, everyone? Uh, basket Basket Case and Slash of the Knife Outtakes. Uh, that's 5 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, Belial's Dream, 2017. A brand new Basket Case inspired animated short by filmmaker Robert Morgan. That's 4 minutes and 49 seconds. Everyone, I've lost everyone. Uh, Anthony, where's my bread? You fucking took off as soon as I wanted some fucking sourdough. That man, I, I picture, like, you go into his house, and he has, like, just a closet full of, like, moldy sourdough. He's fucking demented. Um, hey, Vanessa. Welcome back. Another special feature. Oh, Anthony's still here. Then I'm sorry. I'm sorry I, I indicated that you might be insane. Uh, liquid loaf injection coming up. Yes, I need that. Just the gluten. Give me just the gluten. Uh, so, trailers, TV spots, and radio spots. That's also a special feature. Extensive still gallery, reversible sleeve. I locked up again? Fuck you, what the hell? Reversible sleeve that I already showed. And, uh, there's one on here that I didn't, didn't, didn't write down or didn't get on here but like I wrote it down anyway is what I'm trying to say I'm having trouble speaking this week a basket case at the Museum of Modern Art it's the uh, what I was talking about to uh, to Noah it's a Q&A from the 2017 basket case restoration premiere at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City uh, head and lauder then Hen Tenrick, uh, Bonner or Boner, Schult the Schultz twins, and Yugis Nigels were all in attendance. That's a pretty big fucking turnout, pretty big panel. Um, that's 37 minutes and 12 seconds long. And I'm done! Thank you very much. So, the transfer of this. Um, the transfer is great. It's great. Uh, Noah said uh, it must be really grainy. He's correct. It's sick. It was 16 millimeter. It's also um, it's also like you know full frame, uh, 133 by one uh, aspect ratio. It's not widescreen. It's the original uh, aspect ratio. Uh, very grainy because it's 16 millimeter, but very clear. Very artifact free, very no debris, no no flea bites or scratches or lines or anything. It's completely it's completely free of any anomalies as far as I could see, um, other than the fact that you know Frank Hedlotter filmed it on 16 millimeter and uh, you know it wasn't a high end production anyway. So like there's some like light spots and stuff, but I'm pretty sure. That was straight from the filmmaker to you. 
um, and, you know, couldn't be reversed. So um, it's a great transfer, really great. Vibrant colors, uh, not too bright, uh, a thick layer of grain, but it's sexy, you know, like it's a New York film. It should be gritty and grainy. Um, so it's a great transfer, really good. I don't know what the Something Weird transfer looked like, but uh, you would be, I, there's, I, I can't imagine it's better than this. It's, uh, it's really good. And, um, you know, so that's the transfer. The, the art and everything, A plus for me. Um, I love the slipcase, very subtle with the baskets design and the, the hands. I love the metallic uh, font and a slightly metallic ink on the rest of it, but not as metallic. I love the slipcase. Um, I even like this. I even like the uh, alternate art. And of course, I like the original art better because it's like, I mean, how are you going to compete? That's like so iconic. And, um, and the fucking, even the, even the booklet's better. It's not all historians. You got a little comic in there. Uh, the art on the disc is awesome. So would I fucking upgrade? F f f fuck yes, I would. Um, I can't, you know, there's no way that something weird, even like remotely, can compare to this. Even if the transfer, there's no way the transfer is better. I'm just going to go on the record. There's no way the transfer is better. Um, it's got all of the something weird special features plus a thousand, um, except for the intro, but like, you know, whatever. Um, and, uh,. Yeah, upgrade. Fuck yes. Did I already say that? Would I buy it? Fuck yes, everyone. Do you not understand? It's really fucking good. Uh, really good. Uh, one of the best that Arrow's released recently, I have to say. Um, I mean, look at look at this. Can you imagine me trying to read all these these special features live on camera without my glasses on? I mean, that is a fucking... You could... You could choke out a horse with that. And that's it, everyone. Yes. Yes. I'm not a huge basket case fan. Um, I'm do, I do like it. Uh, I got confused for a second because I had to watch... I had to watch um, the um, part... Uh, Synapse released part two and three. And I had to watch them all together. Hey, Tom, welcome aboard. Um, I'm about to leave. Uh, I had to watch like two through three together. And part two and three are terrible. I fucking hated them. So uh, it was awful. They're very, you know, like not for me. But uh, I lumped them all together with, with the first time I saw Basket Case. And, uh, you know, I liked it a lot better the second time, I have to say. Uh, maybe it's the transfer. Maybe it's the sexy. All the sexiness going on. Uh, it got me. It got me fucking. My juice is flowing, and I enjoyed it a lot more. So uh, if you got if you got something weird, the Blu-ray release of it, throw it right the fuck out the window. It's it's worthless now. Nobody's ever gonna want that. You, you're not gonna be able to sell it. You know, just fucking chuck it and go fucking get this. And um, if you don't own Basket Case,